Hi, in this video we are going to talk about linked list related operations. First, we are going to consider insertion. So inserting items at the beginning of the linked list is very simple. We just have to update the references and it can be done in order one, so constant time complexity. So for example, we have the linked list and we would like to insert at the start the item 10. Of course, this is the first item, so we are going to insert it and it's going to point to a null. Okay, then we would like to insert 4. Of course, we just have to insert the 4 and set the pointer point to the next node, which is the 10 in this case. What about if we would like to insert minus 5 at the beginning? We just have to insert it and we have to set the pointer pointing from the minus 5 to the next node, which is the 4 in this case. So if we inserting items at the beginning, we just have to set this pointer pointing to the next node, which is in this situation is the 4. So this operation is very very fast and this is why we like linked list basically. As you may recall, for arrays, if we would like to insert at the beginning of the array, so the index 0, then we have to reconstruct the array. So instead of the ordo one time complexity that we have seen here for linked lists, for arrays it is ordo n so linear time complexity. It's very very important to see that we like arrays because of the random access and because we can insert items at the end of the list very very fast, ordo one time complexity. We like linked lists because we can insert items at the beginning, not at the end, at the beginning, very very fast ordo one time complexity. Okay, so inserting items at the end of the linked list is not that simple because we have to traverse the whole linked list to find the last node. And how do we find the last node? Because we know the last node is pointing to a null. So this is why this null is very very important as far as linked lists are concerned. And of course we have to update the references when we get there. Okay, updating the references is going to take ordo 1, so constant time complexity, but the overall complexity will be ordo n, so linear time complexity, because first we have to iterate through all the list. So we have to consider every item in the linked list. And okay, what about arrays? Inserting items at the end of the array is very fast. Inserting items at the end of the linked list is quite slow. So for example, we have this linked list with the 12, 4, 123, minus 7, 10 items and we would like to insert 25 at the end of the linked list. It's very important that we can access only the root of the linked list. So here for linked lists, we are not able to make random access. We access the root of the node. What is the root of the node? It is the first node, which is the 12 in this case. So we consider it. So we have to get to the last node. So how do we know that, that that's the last node? That it's pointing to a null. Okay, so is it pointing to a null? No, it's pointing to 4. So let's hop to 4. Is it the last node? Is it pointing to a null? No, so we have to hop to the next node, which is the 123. Is it pointing to a null node? No, so it is not the last node. Minus 7 is not the last node as well. But 10 is the last node because it's pointing to a null. So we just have to update the references. And instead of pointing to the null, this 10 is going to point to the item we would like to insert. So it's going to point to 25 and 25 is going to point to a null. So in this case we have managed to make sure that this 25 will be the last item. Okay, it's very important that updating the references again takes constant time complexity, but first we have to traverse the list itself and that what takes ordo n. So ordo 1 plus ordo n is equal to ordo n. Okay, so that's why inserting items at the end of the linked list 
takes ordo and linear time complexity, while on the other hand inserting items at the beginning of the link list takes ordo 1, so constant time complexity. Okay, so that's what we have been discussing. Inserting at the beginning is ordo 1, inserting at the end is ordo and so linear time complexity. What about the remove? Removing item at the beginning of the link list is always very fast. We don't have to search the item, we just have to update the references accordingly in ordo 1 constant time complexity. Okay, so we have the link list with items 12, 4, 123, minus 7, 10, and 25. And we would like to remove the first item basically the root of the link list. We just have to remove it and basically in Java for example we just have to set it to null. Okay, what about if we would like to remove the next item? In this case the root node is the 4 so we just going to get rid of it. Quite simple and fast operation. What if we would like to remove an item at a given point of the link list? It's not that fast because first we have to search for the given item, which may take a lot of time if the item is at the end of the list. So that's why it's going to have an ordo and linear time complexity algorithm. And it's very important, although I don't want to repeat myself over and over again, that we are not able to use random access as we have seen for arrays. Because here we can access the root node only. And with the help of the root node, we are able to traverse all the link list with the help of the next node pointers. But anyways, we can access the root node only. So we would like to remove the 10. Okay, first we have to search for it. We start at the root node and on every iteration we pose the question that is it the item we would like to get rid of? So the 12 is equal to 10? No, so we keep going, we go to the next node. 4 is equal to 10? No, we keep going. Is it the item we would like to get rid of? No, we keep going. Minus 7 is not equal to 10, so we keep going. But here we have managed to found the item we are looking for. So basically we just have to update the references. The previous node, so this minus 7, is going to point to the next node of the node 10, which is the 25 basically, and this is how we are able to get rid of the 10. We just have to update the references. First, we get rid of the 10, and the previous node, which is the minus 7, is going to point to the next node, which is the 25. So we get rid of the 10, and basically this is how we get rid of an item from a link list. Okay, the time complexity will be linear, so ordo n, because we have to find the item first we would like to get rid of. Removing items from the beginning takes ordo 1 constant time complexity. Removing items at given positions is usually ordo n in the main, so linear time complexity. It may happen that, for example, the item we would like to get rid of is at the beginning of the list. Okay, then we are lucky. But in average, it's going to take ordo n divided by 2 time. And of course, ordo n divided by 2 is equal to ordo n. This is how big ordo notation behaves. So basically, that's all about link lists. It's very important to see the difference between arrays and link lists. Both of them have some advantages as well as disadvantages and we have seen that we have to make sure that we use the proper data structure because it depends on what kind of application we would like to implement. If we would like to manipulate the beginning of a list, then we have to use link lists because array list is going to operate slower. If we would like to have random access, then we have to use arrays on the other hand. So sometimes array lists are better, sometimes link lists are better. In the next video, we are going to talk about the problems concerning link lists and we are going to talk a bit about double link lists. Thanks for watching.